we're going to create a one page website. But even though it's one page, we're still going to have a header template. Why? It's good practice and you might decide to change your website from a one page to a multi page. Now what you do in WordPress underneath Elementor, you'll see the option called template. We're going to click that and go to save template. You could just click add new as well, but I'm showing you the proper way to do it. We're going to click add new over here and we are going to select from the pop up the word header like that. And I'm going to give it a title as well. We'll call it header template like that. And we'll click create template. Now, when you do that, Elementor will actually give you some example templates that you could use. You could start to work on them um, as you want. However, I'm going to create one completely from scratch just to show you how easy and simple it is. Let's cross that out. Now, don't worry about the fact it says header template there. Honestly, you won't see that when you're on a live website. We're going to click the plus sign here and decide on our structure. This is still using the section and columns approach with Elementor. So I could have um, one section, like one house, or I could have two columns within. So I could have different items within there. I'm actually going to show you how to do it whereby you just use one section with one column. So this is one section and inside of there you have one column. I'm going to drop into here um, an image. Now we're gonna, I'm going to drop stuff in and then we'll modify how it looks entirely. OK, so let's drop in a image. Now, this image is huge. Don't worry about that. Let's actually pick something for it to belong to. So from our media library, I just created some uh, fake images there. We'll add that in and I'm going to set it to be full. Full means the full resolution, OK? If you go for thumbnail or medium, it actually affects the resolution of the image. So make sure you go for full. And I'm going to make sure it's a left aligned like that. I'm then going to go to style, click pixel. And I'm now going to set the size of this to be 200 pixels in width and the maximum to be 202. Why have I done both of them? Well, if you don't set the maximum width, as your screen gets bigger, the logo will also get bigger and you might go, well, I'm OK with that. I want it to be fully responsive. But on a ridiculously ultra wide screen, well, that logo could look ridiculously wide. And depending on how you created that logo, it might start to pixelate and the resolution might look really, really awful. So be careful of that. So right now we have one section with one container inside of there. We have the logo. And if I do that. Hit the chevron. That's looking kind of OK, but let's now start messing around with the look of that section. Go back over here and click at the top. This is currently a boxed. If I do full width and I do that, can you now see the logo has gone more to the left than where it was before? Let's now also say there is no gap with the columns. And in terms of the height, I'm going to just say minimum height and make sure that is currently set to zero or in fact, just completely clear it out. That now means that this header will only be as tall as it needs to be to contain what's within there. Now the Mad Cat logo is right up against the top edge there and it's looking way too close. Make sure you're on the section. You could go to gaps and say give it like an extended gap for instance. Maybe even give it something like a really wider gap. But I like to be in control. And I'm going to go with no gap. Go to advanced. And I'm going to go to the padding and I'm going to say, give me about five pixels all the way around like that. Let's just hit publish. Now, the first time you hit publish on a header, you'll get asked to go, well, where do you want it? Do you want it on every page, which would be the entire site? Or do you just want it to be on a particular site? So I might say only do it on the front page or maybe only do it on a particular page. So I'll go over here and I'll start typing a word. It's not really going to find much at the moment, believe me, because there's not much been built yet. But this is where you could start defining it. I'm just going to say do it on the entire site gap for now because that's our intention and hit save and close. But if I view this, OK, can you see there's a five pixel around that uh, header? So far, so good. Now, though, I want to add in something else here. So I'm going to drop in a navigation menu. Now, as soon as you do that, your navigation menu actually drops below because the section and column approach always worked in sort of like a column approach so that your estate was to the left and right of whatever you added. So I could go over here to this logo and go, right, I now want it to be in the center. You're using horizontal estate. Every time you add an item, it sat in a column one below one another. 
Now, I don't want that to be there. I want it to actually sit in line with the logo in a line so they come, but I want it to be at opposite ends of the screen. So how could we do that? There's two ways really. One way is that you could click on the logo, go to advanced, go to width and set it to be custom, go to the navigation menu, go to advanced, go to the width and also set that to be custom. And now they're in line. And then you would adjust to be where they sit. Or you could go down another approach. So if I undo what I did there and put this all back to how it was, you could also just kind of go to the first column, right click and do add column. And we now have another column sitting to the right. I pick the navigation menu up and I drop it into column two. I could then go over here and I could increase column two to now be big enough to accommodate the navigation menu. I'm going to click on the navigation menu though, go to content and I'm going to change it to be, there you go, I've picked that one there. These are fake menus by the way. I'm also going to hit an align to align it to the right. I'm going to say at the moment there's like an underline pointer appearing. I don't like that so we'll have no pointer. Um, and I'm just going to say make this be a full width which will make sense when I come to mobile. In fact we'll leave it off and we'll do that in the later video about mobile. The same with the aside and the hamburger as well. So I'm now going to start to modify the styling of this navigation menu. I'm going to go to style for the menu. And over here at the moment, it is already assigned to Lato. How is it already assigned to Lato? Well, that's because it's picking up our custom font. Because we did the global font. If you don't do the global font, okay, um, you then have to go and pick it. And that's why I'm talking about efficiency and how you produce and do things, okay? Um, the color at the moment is this dark color. I'm fine with that. In terms of the hover color, we'll go with uh, this um, brownier color, murkier, mustardy gold color, in fact. And when it's active, I'll just go with the, in fact, we'll go with the text color. Yeah, it's the text color there, but the normal and hover. So when you hover, you get a bit of a gold color appear. And if it's active, it just goes back to the standard color. Let's go back to typography. So when I pick 100, we now get the faint font, which was the fin. Remember, we did it in the custom fonts. If I go for 200, it's a little bit thicker. 300, you'll get a bit more thickness. I could now also start to affect uh, the spacing between the letters as well. I actually think it was fine as it was, so I'm not going to adjust that any further. That is the style we're going to apply. I'm not intentionally doing it for the mobile because that's a later video. But that is the style we're going to apply, okay? And that's how it looks. Now I'm going to go to the background of our section. Go to style, go to background type, and I could now assign a color like that. Because it's a transparent logo, it picks up the color. If you had a white background for your logo, you're going to see a white square or a rectangle there. So think about that when you're doing it. We could also do a gradient as well. So I might decide actually we're going to have a merging of colors here and I could change the angle of how that looks, for instance, as well. I prefer it just to be a standard color like that, if I'm honest, and I think that's gonna work for us pretty well. Let's now just update that. It's already publishing to the entire site. Let's hit the chevron and have a look at that. That is, in its simplicity, a really simple logo. But what if we wanna go a step further, and we now wanna add in some social icons? So let's type in social. Let's pick up this widget. And let's drop it um, above the navigation. So now we've done that. At the moment, the logo is in the center of its column. And these items here are also in the center of their individual rows. So I'm going to go over to uh, the social sharing icon and I'm going to align it to the right. Now, even though it's aligned to the right, it's very much way over to the right. So I'm going to go to advanced. In fact, I'll do this in a moment. You'll notice that it's kind of like a rounded square effect, which is round. I could go with square. I could go with circle as well. But what if I don't want circle or anything like that at all? Let's just ensure this is three columns, okay? I could also go over here and change this icon to be um, Instagram, for instance, like that. Let's insert. And of course, you would put in your link. You can have more than three, okay? So I could have gone over here and added in another item if I wanted. We'll leave it as three for now. I'm going to go to style and rather than having the official color, I'm going to click custom. And this is where I'm now going to modify the primary and the secondary color. I'm going to set the secondary color to be 
uh, I'm going to go for the text color like that. And I'm going to ensure that the primary color is, um, where is it? There it is, is light like that. So it now matches the background color of the section. So instead of having like these circles, we now have just the icons look like that, which looks quite nice as a miniature form. The spacing though between these is really big and I'm not liking that. So let's go over to the column. The default space is 20 pixels. I'm gonna hit zero. When I do that, did you notice the space dropped down? I could have done 50 and increased it, but that looked a little bit ridiculous. Let's go for zero. But I still think they are still quite far apart. Could they be made smaller? Well, let's go over to the social sharing icons first. I'm gonna click the advanced tab for the social icons, click the margin and where it has top, I'm going to decrease that by about 10, something like that. And I'm also now gonna take away the bottom. I went the wrong way there. I'm gonna take away about 10 there as well. Then I'm gonna to go to the navigation menu, click advanced, okay. Again, do margin and from the bottom, I'm now gonna take away about 10 as well. You don't have to do this by the way, okay. And from the top, I'm still gonna take it a little bit closer like that, about minus two, okay. So I've brought them a little closer. I'm gonna go back to my social sharing icons and the Instagram logo is a bit way too much to the right. So I'm gonna increase some of the margin just to be something like that five. Let's update that and now have a look. That's now looking a little bit better. Now you could easily add on some further padding above and below whatever you wanna do to make it feel more spacious. I'm gonna go with okay for that for now. Okay, just for what we're doing on this website. Now, one other tip I do have though, is that when you are doing your section, you gotta make a decision of, or your header, sorry, do you want it to stick to the top? What that means is as you scroll up and down the website, is the header gonna disappear or is it gonna kinda like always be there at the top? So you don't have to scroll back to the top, for instance, to like um, see what's going on. Now I am gonna, for the purpose of this video right now, show you how to do it. But later on, we might deactivate and switch that off as we do further features. Let's click the section, go to advanced, go to motion effects, and then say sticky top. And that will be implemented for the desktop, the tablet, and the mobile. Let's now update that. Now, right now, because we don't have any further content on the page, we're not gonna see it in motion. But I can tell you and assure you that when we do have more content, you're gonna see that stick to the top but we may take it off as well. Next video, we're gonna cover off checking this in the mobile and you must do that before you move onto any other section.